Are you someone that's not feeling at home in church anymore, or you've been searching around for a church and you can't find the right place? Well, you're not alone. Uh, there's a lot of us that are realizing and understanding that church has become a country club. It's become a place to socialize. But if you want to go there and and really fellowship with people and, and sit down and pray with them and have them truly care about you and you care about them, that's getting impossible to find today. Uh, we're, we're finding so much wokeism creeping into the church where you just simply can't speak boldly the church of God or the, or the, the word of God anymore and uh, without offending people. And it's really sad. And, uh, and uh, a lot of us are just, maybe not a lot of us, but some of us are feeling, uh, we're feeling lonely and isolated. We're feeling like the black sheep. Um, so, I do find that God's Holy Spirit is moving right now. And he has placed people in my life that are also seeking the truth to whatever whatever end it, it leads us to. And, and by that, I mean, we've been taught a, a lot of falsehoods in the church. A lot of, uh, as the Bible calls, uh, tells us to beware of the doctrines of demons, the traditions of men. Um, We've been fa- ta- taught a lot of false things and we've been given a lot of catchphrases uh, and things that just don't exist in the Bible. But we've been we've been put into cages again. We've been enslaved in, uh, in, in exactly what the Pharisees were doing. The Pharisees were people in religious costumes walking around thinking they were the holiest of all. Um, and they were the ones that were persecuting Jesus, Yeshua. I call him Yeshua because that's his real name. There's no J in the Greek. It's Yeshua. Uh, but I don't come from digressing here. Anyways, these people in religious costumes uh, thought they know thought they knew the scriptures better than anybody else, and yet they completely missed the point uh, that, that God had in in, in His Word for us. Um, you know, there were, Moses gave 613 laws handed down from God through Moses, and uh, what the Pharisees did is they added to them. They added counterfeit sins to the laws of God so that people became slaves, basically. If they didn't behave exactly like the Pharisees wanted, then they were ostracized. You know, they were put out. They were frowned upon. They were outcast. They were made to be as black sheep. Uh, And that's exactly what Yeshua warned us about. He said, beware of the scribes and the Pharisees. All right. Well, what are scribes? Scribes are the people that write things down and they translate. All right. So we have to be very, very careful uh, to go back to the Hebrew and the Greek and learn the words uh, that have been mistranslated. And there are many. My point is that all of this ties into we are in the end times. And I know everybody says, oh, it's always it's never been this bad generation to generation. No, we've made a gigantic leap. Yes, those generations said those things, but we've made a gigantic leap in our generation in the last, since the 60s, okay, of of the depravity and the sin and everything else, the evil that's going on in this world. It's It's a gigantic leap from the way it's ever been in those previous generations. Anyways, back to my original thought here. Uh, if you're feeling out of place, uh, I, I am seeing this in my own life. Uh, I believe it is Holy Spirit moving, uh, gathering together the, the, uh, the, us that are misplaced, that are the lost sheep, that are truly seeking the word of God to all ends, even if it means that we have to unlearn things that we've been taught our entire lives that we thought were truths. And, and we've, been, we've taken it into our bodies so much that we think uh, it's a part of us now. It's, it's, uh, it's our heart speaking to us. Well, the Bible also says the heart is the most deceitful of all things. So in a way, uh, you have to unlearn what you've learned a lot of times through through church. And the way you do this is you get into God's word and you read it and you read and read. And the, the great thing is today we have online lexicons. Um, we have concordances. We have Bibles online where you can you can search like a scholar like there never was before. You have so many tools to uh, to easily, easily find whatever uh, whatever uh, study you want to, to, or whatever truth you want to get to the bottom of. 
Uh, so, and I encourage you to do that. And I encourage you to come out of these churches that don't care anymore, these woke churches, and form your own churches. What is a church? A church is not a building. It's not a place with a steeple, okay? The church literally means the body, the people. The body of Christ is the people, the children of God. That is you and I getting together wherever it is. Meet wherever, okay? Meet in your homes. Meet at a picnic table at a park when it's not 10 degrees below zero with wind chill factor, okay? Um, Search out God. It, uh, the Bible tells us that iron sharpens iron, okay? And so you shall sharpen each other, okay? So I've had all kinds of people in life uh, just say one thing to me, and I've started thinking about it, and I guess maybe the Holy Spirit was working on me a little bit, and then I started to really dive into that subject in the Bible and, and get to the truth of things, and, uh, and uh, I was freed from a lot of this false get, guilt, you know, beware of the doctrines of demons, the, the traditions of men, and, uh, and that's what the devil wants to do. Uh, he's out there. He's, he knows his time is up. He's coming to the end of the age and his time is up. So he's working extra hard to deceive you, to, to, to deceive me, to tear us apart. Okay, so don't go for this, this false guilt that, uh, oh, you're, uh, you know, you're just, uh, you're not planted in church. You're, um, uh, there's no such thing as a perfect church. Well, anybody that puts that premise out there, there's no such thing as a perfect church. This is a misleading statement. Of course, there's no such thing as a leading as a, as a perfect church, but at least you want to be in a place, in a setting, in a group of people that seek out the truth of God, seek it out in the scriptures to whatever end it leads you to, and to fellowship together and to pray to each other. Okay, you, you can't you can't dismiss. Uh, what we are supposed to be doing as Christians and, and, and seeking the, lo- the love and will of God, uh, you can't like just avoid all that uh, and, and dismiss it because somebody says, oh, there's no such thing as a perfect church. Well, if you've got to say that there's no such thing as a perfect church, then you're already making up an excuse not to do these things that God commands us to do. Okay, if I can't say in church, hey, we should be able to sit down and pray together, not for just in, in all the liturgy going on and the formula of sit, stand, sit, stand, uh, sing for 15 minutes, listen to a 45 minute sermon, uh, wave to everybody and smile on the way out the door. No, 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 no. That's 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 not church at all. It's not. Okay, go back to the first century church. Okay, look up in the in the book of Revelation. It's revelation, not with an S, revelation. It's it's the revelation of Jesus Christ. It's the revealing of what Jesus Christ has to say. The one that always sticks with me is talking to the one church. I forget the name of the church, but he says, to those of you that are neither hot nor cold, but lukewarm, I am going to vomit you out of my mouth. Wow. All right, so... Do you want to be a part of that church that, 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 that God, that Yeshua wants to vomit out of his mouth? I don't think so. Neither do I. So seek out those people. Be aware of those people that you just had some sort of circumstantial way of bumping into people. And, and you start a conversation and you, and you discover that they're a believer that searches the word of truth just like you. Stay with those people, hold with those people, because I believe the Holy Spirit is bringing us out of out of these wokeism churches and bringing us together as the real church. Okay, the real church again is the body. It is it is the body of Christ. It is the body of believers. It is the collection of people of, of the sons and daughters of God, like you and me. So, thanks for listening again. I know I'm all over the place sometimes, but uh, there's a lot of thoughts to give out there. Get out there sometimes. So, thanks. Pass it on.